What's up, cannabis industry professionals, dispensaries, brands? Uh, my name is Samuel Fisher. I am the owner of Green Dispensary Marketing, and I want to talk with you today about some growth marketing hacks that you could use in 2024. Um, as you know, the world of digital marketing is constantly evolving and changing. Um, lots of brands are currently leveraging strategies that you are not leveraging. Um, and so my name is Samuel Fisher, as I'm saying, um, I have a lot of experience in this industry. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and talk with you a little bit about how you can ensure that your dispensary gets better rankings, more sales, more revenue than all your competitors. That's what we're going for. Not just the rankings, but also the revenue and the sales, correct? So uh, just a little bit of background information on me. Um, if you don't know who I am, you can search Sam Fisher Cannabis. I'll find a little bit of my work. And I have a lot of experience ranking internationally for these high volume, high competition terms. Some of the examples might be best THC carts, best THC gummies, and even marijuana seeds. Um, and as a result of this work that I've done, um, I've raised over 1.5 million in revenue um, in the past year for seed companies, CBD gummy companies, um, through another agency. And so, and so after building so much success um, for some of these other players in the industry, I wanted to actually jump out of my own, um, start my own agency for dispensary owners like yourself that are struggling with some of these local SEO tactics. Um, I am able to bring in a system that's been proven to work internationally for high volume, high competition terms, much more competitive than the stuff that you're facing in your local markets. And so here's actually some of my clients that I've been working with, especially with this uh, strategy that I've been discussing. So we have Seed Supreme, Homegrown Cannabis Co, and Tommy Chong CBD. And so there's some pretty big names in there. Um, with these guys, I've been doing a lot of Parasite SEO. Um, and I've also been working with a dispensary in Colorado Springs called Fountain Organics. Um, we're just getting started with them. We're just now starting to get some results. However, that's a little bit of background about me and my clients. Um, here's some of the results that I've actually done. And so uh, using this Parasite SEO strategy, one of the main sites I've been working on is a site called sacb.com. Um, as you can see um, right here when I'm starting early 2023, you can see a noticeable rise in traffic um, as throughout the year. And so one of the things I'm proud to say is that we actually had the number one article on sacb.com for most of the year. Um, and that's the one that ranked for marijuana seeds. So here's actually just a little revenue report just to kind of give you some social proofs. Uh, this is one from one article that we did posted on SACB. And so as you can see here, there's $80,000. A lot of that was going to Seed Supreme, the Green Affiliates Homegrown Cannabis Co. Um, and here's some article tags, some social proofs just to show that I have what I say. Um, um, if you were to go, as I'm saying, if you just go search Sam Fisher Cannabis, you'll find my work. However, here's some article tags, Sam Fisher, SACB, Mercury News, Sonic Cruz Sentinel, Southern Maryland Chronicle, and so on. And so um, here's actually some of the rankings. Um, so if you see a red dot right here, um, at the time that I took these screenshots, these were ranked for these, these keywords. And so what that means for you is that we have a system in place that can ensure that you are able to dominate your local search results. Um, and it's just using some basic SEO stuff that I've learned through my work in other agencies and also through this one now where I'm specializing in dispensaries, just like yourself. And so let's go ahead and jump right into it. We got 10 dispensary marketing hacks. Um, I will make a separate video for each one of these. So if you want a little bit more information that isn't just me running through it, uh, rapid fire, um, definitely check those out. Um, but let's go ahead and get right into it. And so number one, um, if you want to have a dispensary that is optimized for growth in 2024, you need an optimized dispensary website. And so uh, one of the things that you should be going for um, would be the visitor conversion rate, making sure that you have legitimate authentic photos of you um, and your store, uh, making sure that you have clear call to actions um, in any relevant part of your website, making sure that the page speed is less than three seconds, making sure that you're able to load the site in less than three seconds, and so all of these things are part of an optimized dispensary website, specifically for a conversion rate. Um, and so if you're having issues, like your site's taking 10 seconds to load, um, it's going to have an impact on your sales. That's, I want to talk about Parasite SEO later on. However, I wanted to mention that that is something right off the bat that I would recommend if you are a cannabis brand, if you're a cannabis dispensary, maybe you have your own uh, exclusive products, um, exclusivity agreements with brands. 
specifically for CBD, Delta, uh, things that are legal internationally, uh, and specifically nationally. You can make a separate store and even run ads on that separate store. And so those are just a couple things that you should be noticing right off the bat and potentially jumping on as a marketing option. And so that's number one. Number two, you need to make sure that your page is filling in content gaps with optimized content. Um, so more than likely, if you're a dispensary, let's say you have a dispensary in Denver, uh, then it probably means that you're also serving areas like Lakewood, Federal Heights, um, Lodo. I think Federal Heights is an area. I'm actually from Denver. It's embarrassing to say that I don't know that for sure. Lower downtown area. And so what you would want to do is you want to actually have pages for each of these separate service areas. And so it'd be dispensary and Lodo, for example. And then you have an informational, have an informational page uh, which describes what to look for in a dispensary in Lodo. Maybe even also linking some of the best dispensaries in Lodo, including some of your competitors. Also putting yourself at number one. Um, you're going to need that. You're going to need to make sure that it's optimized to a semantic or keyword density uh, standard. And then you're also going to want to make sure that you're getting backlinks on that page. That's something that we'll discuss a little bit later. Um, however, this is number two. You're going to want to make sure that you are filling in those content gaps. It's more than likely the reason that you're not getting the rankings that you want is because you're not doing the content that you need to be doing. That's number two. Number three, you need a safe paid traffic system. So when I talk to dispensary owners, one of the first things that they usually tell me when I ask them about their paid traffic strategy. So, well, we invest in weed maps. Um, so as I was getting at the start, there, there's many different ways to safely invest in paid traffic in the cannabis industry. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to go on Google and type in, uh, have a PPC campaign for dispensaries in your area. However, um, you still will be able to safely invest in paid traffic if you are doing so in a manner um, kind of touched, I kind of gave away the secret at the start, talking about the CBD Parasite SEO store. This is, a, this is an example of a way to have a safe paid traffic system. Um, in addition to running PPC campaigns, you can conduct an actual Parasite SEO strategy, um, which is one of the strategies used by Tommy Chong. And if you're not doing what Tommy Chong is doing in 2024, probably shouldn't be in the marijuana industry. That's number three. Number four, you are going to need to start an aggressive listing campaign and making sure that you have the proper NAP. If you don't know what NAP is, it just means name, address, phone number. If you don't know what a listing is, uh, it's basically, uh, have you ever go on, gone to Google and typed in dispensaries in Denver, for example? Um, the first thing that will happen is you will see business listings. And so Google is one of these sites uh, where if anybody listing this, you're probably already on Google and you probably have a Google My Business account. However, there are hundreds of other listing sites. Um, not only will they provide you free backlinks, but they will also give you free citations and authority. And so this is something that you need to be leveraging, assuming that you are going to do so in a manner uh, that has consistent name, address, and phone number. So that's number four. Number five, uh, we will need to start an external and internal link building campaign. If you don't know what that is, um, it's, a, it's a lot of fancy SEO words, but let me break this down for you in a way that's easy to understand. A backlink is a link placed on another site that directs to your site. And on this link, they're not going to usually input the direct URL. They will have something called anchor text. And so imagine this link right here, where say you want a free dispensary audit, talk to me directly. I would highly recommend you go to this link. However, imagine that this just said dispensary marketing and you were to click to it and it would go to this URL. That's what you would call an anchor text. And so this is a very important part of successful backlink building um, is to make sure that the anchor text is optimized for keywords that you want to rank for. Um, along that line, um, internal link building is something that I would imagine just about anybody listening to this has problems with. Um, and so basically internal link building is making sure that you are passing authority for the right keywords to the right pages on your website, uh, making sure that your site is easily crawled by Google bots. Um, it's a lot of technical stuff. However, you want to make sure that you have a complete web, that your top pages have the most authority, the most link juice, and that your bottom ones connect to these top pages. And so that's in a nutshell what link building is. 
That's number five. Number six, you need to start getting listing reviews and ideally implementing an automated review system. Um, so we were talking about listings, having an aggressive listing campaign. Uh, once you get those listings up, you're going to want to get reviews on those listings. And so obviously Google is going to be the first place you look. Um, that's the first place I would recommend you look. However, it doesn't even need to be the only place that you get listing reviews. Um, and so basically what this looks like, uh, maybe I would imagine most of you listening to this, when you are checking out, when you're at checkout, a uh, customer comes into your dispensary, they're buying an ounce. You know, you'll take their money. You might also ask for a phone number or an email address. And so if you're not leveraging this phone number and email address for your marketing strategy, that needs to stop right now. And this is one of the ways that we can get consistent listing reviews. And when we get consistent listing reviews, it makes us look better than your competitors, than our competitors I'm talking in first person here, even though you're technically not my client, at least not yet. But this is the idea that matters here. You want to make sure you're getting reviews on these listings. And if you're not going to constantly be asking for phone number and email address and then following up manually, you need an automated review system to do this for you. And so it's very easy to do, especially when you work with a digital marketing agency like Green Dispensary Marketing. And you can go down here and get a free audit. And we'll even implement an automated review system. That's my free advertising. But if you're still listening here, that's number six. Number seven is consistent communication with your customers. Um, when you start to build your email and phone number list, um, one of the best rules of thumb that I would give you is that the power that you have in your list is not necessarily the list yourself, but with your relationship with the list. And so if you were to have a customer come in, you take their email down, you take their phone number, maybe even follow up and get a review. Um, odds are still likely that they'll forget about you, especially if um, there's something inconveniencing them about visiting your store, for example. They'll just go to somewhere else. Maybe they get a better deal somewhere else. However, if you're constantly in their inbox, constantly giving them new deals, maybe just once a week, say constantly, consistent, consistent but not spamming communication with customers might be a better way to put that. Um, you're going to be putting yourself as this omnipresent sort of dispensary, and you're always going to be in the minds of your customers, which is really what you want to be doing as a marketing strategy for your dispensary. Um, the polite dispensary won't ask for the review. They won't ask for their phone number. They won't ask for their email. They especially won't be consistently following up with their customers because they're more worried about them getting upset than nurturing the relationship with their customers and ensuring that they come back. And so this is the important part of cons consistent communication with customers. So an easy way to do that might have a weekly email where you're just sending out a deal to your local subscribers or may mainly just talking about a new update in your store. But you want to be consistently talking with your customers. Number eight, uh, we kind of touched upon this, uh, but we want to get an automated email and SMS system in place. Uh, you can hire somebody to do this. However, put it to you this way. There's platforms where you can pay to send 10,000 emails a month. Um, for a lot less than you would pay someone else to send 10,000 emails a month. And you need this to be automated. You need it to be following the, the Can Spam Act, for example. You need to be making sure that you are doing your email and SMS automated marketing in a manner that is legal and in a manner that follows up effectively with your clients to make sure that they come in, get reviews, give them consistent content. Um, the idea here is that you are not working so hard week in and week out uh, to send these emails and SMS that you have an automated system in place. Um, as a business owner, I would imagine your number one goal, besides increasing your revenue, is also saving some of your time. Um, and so automating your marketing using email and SMS automated systems, it's one of the ways to do that. Number nine, uh, once we get some listings up and you are starting to get some reviews on them, uh, yeah, I hate to break it to you, but you're going to have some bad act. You're going to have some bad actors. You're going to have some bad apples. Uh, people that are just don't like you, and there, there's nothing you can do about it, and they just don't like you. And they'll go as far as going on to your reviews, your listings, and then posting negative reviews. 
And so as a hawkish uh, business owner who wants to protect yourself, uh, make sure that one or two negative reviews doesn't skew your influence and authority in the local area, you need to be active on these listings and managing your reviews. And so when you do get that negative review, it's actually a, see, when customers see a negative review, uh, from my personal standpoint, like if I were to go, I'm a cannabis user since age of 16, if I go search a cannabis site, see a negative review, I generally just think that person is just angry. It was having a bad day. Um, and I know I'm not the only one who views it that way. And so one of the ways to kind of turn a negative review into a positive light is to respond to these reviews. Um, be empathetic, show them that you care, follow up with them in a nice manner, and friendly invite them back. Um, and in some cases, maybe you even offer them a gift publicly. Um, the idea here is that we're taking a negative situation and turning it into a positive, and you're not going to be able to do that unless you're active on your listings and managing your reviews. And on that note, you want customers to see that your business is active on these listing sites, because if they're going to find you on a listing site, Odds are they trust it and they like it already. And so if they see that you're actively posting there, um, it's just going to help build authority um, for your dispensary from that listing. And so that's number nine. It's number 10. Here we go. The online parasite SEO strategy. So this is something we briefly talked about in number one. Uh, this is something that my agency, um, nobody's going to be able to compete with us in this, in this area is this online parasite SEO strategy. Um, this is just a system that we've built up and mastered. Um, however, basically what this is, say you want to sell CBD and Delta products that are legal, national, you can do an online parasite SEO strategy. And so what it would, what it would look like, uh, maybe you want to sell a topical CBD cream. We'll set up a topical CBD website for you. We'll optimize it for SEO, we'll optimize it for the keywords, and then we can look at publishing uh, that website on other authoritative websites uh, and then recommending your store as the number one site for that niche. And so um, it's not just for CBD, you could do it for dispensaries, you could do it for Delta. However, this is just another way to leverage sales that are not going to just come from local areas, but also to start to build some national sales as well. And so um, if that's something you would like to learn more about, I would highly recommend um, you book a strategy session with me and we'll talk about it. However, those are my 10 growth marketing hacks for your dispensary in 2024. I would highly recommend that you leverage them. Um, and if anything, you can take this information that I've given you and run with it. However, let's go back here. Um, if you want some more information from me, maybe you're getting a little bit of information overload here and you want some help. Head over to greendispensarymarketing.com slash dispensary dash strategy dash session. And I will personally prepare a free dispensary audit for you. I'll find all your pain points. I'll find all the areas that you can improve on. And then I will prepare an action plan for your marketing in 2024, all completely free of charge. Uh, just go to this link, book, book session with me. Uh, and then hopefully uh, we can work together. But that's it. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you found this useful, and I hope that you succeed in 2024, more so than your competitors. My name is Samuel Fisher, and I'm your friend, and I'm an advocate for the cannabis industry. Would love to talk with you soon about how I can help you boost your revenue and sales in 2024. Hope you have a great day, and thanks for listening.